Kata. Welcome to Beta.tv, the Polish drummer's website. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we are catching up with you at Drum Fest 2016 in Opola, Poland. Um, you're doing your clinic tomorrow, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's start with that. Uh, what's your approach to doing clinics and what's the message you think is most important to convey? Well, you know, I think, I think um, it depends on, you know, your audience. But in this case, um, for tomorrow's clinic and what I've kind of, been, kind of been doing, I'm about to set out on a 13-day clinic tour of Europe. And so I haven't really done clinics here yet. This is the mm -hmm. first time. So I've been doing this clinic in the States for a few years now. But basically, it's the idea is it, it comes from questions I've been asked on social media again and again, mostly pertaining to... How do you get gigs? How do you keep getting gigs? And um, so the business side, of things. the business side, a lot of that, but also how do you go from gig to gig that are maybe not the same style, from say Smash Mouth to Marilyn Manson or something, mm -hmm. as an example. But so the main the main two points that I kind of base this clinic on is is basically those two points that I think kind of sum all that up, which is um, diversity and adaptability, being able to. Um, be diverse enough to work, to keep working, and being uh, diverse enough to adapt. And so in order, in order to, uh, you know, maybe you're not exactly cut out for that gig, but you can say yes to everything um, because you have this diverse enough background from doing the work and playing with different players. And, and I kind of try to uh, take, the, um, take the audience through uh, musical examples showing the different, like actually... Mm -hmm. You know, showing how these these ideas and uh, how they apply how they apply to me and so far what I've what I've been doing. Yeah, and we also get asked those technical questions like Rick just got asked. Sure, sure. Uh, what do people ask about most often when it comes to technique? You know, sound. For, you know. Yeah, for for me, the question I get asked the most is you know mostly brush technique. You know, oh, brushes. Yeah. You know, playing brushes. I've tried to. Um, you know, part of the clinic in talking about diversity is show that, you know, when I was younger, I tried to um, study as many different types of uh, percussion as, and drum set as well, specifically. So from uh, marching drum corps to improve my hands so that I could, you know, apply that to drum set to um, playing hand drums, kungas or whatever, uh, and, and tune percussion, marimba, you know, to be able to take that technique and tune your ears and, and same thing with brushes. So in the clinic, I tried to um, kind of touch on those things and how those, uh, I think, have helped me um, develop my touch and sound and feel and, and also tie into the diversity. You know, the idea of, of um, a concept I talk about is, is learning how to learn. And, and um, through brushes is a whole other technique that I just immersed myself into. And drum, drum corps, when I got to college at, in, in Texas, at University of North Texas, when I was very young, I didn't have a marching band in high school in New York. So when I got to North Texas, I didn't play drum set for almost a year. I immersed myself in these other, other uh, you know, mediums that I maybe hadn't, wasn't aware of or exposed to. So um, in that process, I learned how to learn. I was learning how to take something completely new, assimilate it, and through the process that I kind of developed, and the more you do that, the more you're able to uh, adapt and diversify, and, and it all kind of keeps coming around. You just keep adding on to it, and I'll, I'll discuss that tomorrow in, these clinic, in, in this clinic, and I'll show from different musical examples and going from different gigs how one gig caused me to change um, to focus on, say, double bass or something, you know, a technique, I, you know, something I hadn't really been working on, and then how that later down the road in my career um, served me well. So, um, but, but more specifically, yeah, like uh, when you're asking to answer your question, that or, say, rudiments and how they, you know, apply to drum set. And maybe sometimes I'll be get asked, to, like, um, you know, based on uh, something I'll play, in the snare solo and how would you apply that to drum set? Because you know? I think there's a lot of compound rudiments that are um, are yet to be applied to drum set. Or like like you know some drummers like obviously Vinny or like Tony Williams, you know, was able to apply a lot of these kind of complex compound rudiments. When I say compound, I mean two rudiments played on top of each other or more, 
um, and how you would apply that to drum set. I still think there's a lot of um, there's there's a lot of separation between the two, and uh, I just think the drum set players, a lot of drum set players haven't gotten hip to the compound rudiments, and a lot of the drum core guys who have it don't don't ever play drum set or don't apply it. So I think there's still a whole wide world out there, and that might be the next clinic I do. You know, the next the next the next time I'm back, maybe that'll be part of the. You know. Who knows? Because um, you're mostly known for your rock skills, right? With Chris Cornell, especially, and, and, and Melvin. People who come to the clinics now, the, the, the kind of sort of like uh, pigeonholed you as this rock guy, and certainly. So it's a way of getting out of that. Absolutely, that's a great, great point. I bring that up when I'm playing. It's fun, you know, of course, to play some of those tunes, Chris Cornell or Manson or Foreigner, but yeah, to play right. some of those songs to like show that, um, you know, how how I'm, I'm uh, you know, basically what, what to familiarize some of the listeners with actual tracks of tunes I've played live in some of the gigs but I think um, yeah being able to do a drum clinic in there I'm able to show other sides of my playing mm -hmm. and able to kind of touch on the fact that although you know me as this there's a whole background of work. And you can do the same basically mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, work, of work that I put in trying to, mm -hmm. to, to be better at things and, and, and to be honest I, I guess I always wanted to play popular music but it didn't have to be rock it just that's what happened you know that's how it turned out but I would like to think that I had spent enough time in college and um, and and practicing and playing out playing all styles of music from jazz to you know uh, fusion and um, mm -hmm. you know very light you know playing instead of just rock it's just that's how it happened yeah. you know? and does this story will probably confirm it that you got your gig with Malin through the YouTube clip of you doing rudiments. Well, I didn't get the gig that way, but it actually oh, okay. is. Okay, you got no. It's, it, yeah, well, no, way. not even that. It's funny. Um, I, the way I got the what that did for me is it broke the ice between he and I yeah. at our first meeting. And exactly. When you go to an audition, you know how do you? Yeah. There's you have five minutes, and a lot of the drummers don't realize this, yeah. but you only have five minutes not only to show your your yeah. playing ability but who you are yeah. and so that they know who you are and they can understand your personality so breaking the ice is very ex ex that yeah. barrier between you and the artist is extremely hard in audition kind of sterile situation it's yeah. not like you're going out for dinner or drinks or something so when you're in that situation um, you, you try to use whatever you can I always say that and in this case before the audition I think Manson was like who is this guy and what's he do and, and uh, bass player Fred um, Put on a bunch of YouTube clips, yeah. and one of the things he saw that really, you know, took notice of, and I guess you know, according to him, he was impressed was this marching snare solo. That exactly. So one side of your playing, which isn't exactly rock, right, got you, or at least helped you get this gig. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and so, yeah, I would never. I you know, I always joke about it, and I, I may you know, mention it tomorrow. But how I never in a million years would think that. A, a, a rudimental snare drum solo would break the ice between me and Marilyn Manson. So it's that's a great time right. because it really is. It's a part of my playing, and I think it's fun to represent that in clinics and talk about that. But uh, the reality is, is it is a side of me, and it it uh, it you know I think it's benefited my playing um, mm. ultimately. You know, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, diversify. Uh.